Hey YouTube, Surreal Canon here. Welcome back for more Disguise 4 Promise Revisited. In the last set of character demos, we did the second half of the DLC characters. Gig through Pirohiko Ichimonji. In this episode, we are going to start uh, showing off the uh, generic classes, starting with the uh, humanoids you have by default. Now, if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about your guys, you can go here into the data shop and uh, go to your character list. As you can see, I'm still missing some guys. <laughs> but they will all be filled out by the time we are done with this. I'll probably show them off then in a separate video. I should also note that uh, I have sorted my uh, my uh, characters classes by the uh, tiers at which they level up. So, first of all, we are going to do the uh, the classes that you have by default. By coincidence, these all unlock at levels 15, 40, 80, 160, and 320, uh, with the, an exception for the magic classes. In any case, let us begin with the uh, the warrior. Male warriors uh, like swords, spears, and axes. They learn five of each. They learn five each of the sword and spear skills and six axe skills. Their aptitudes uh, very highly favor attack and defense. So uh, definitely a very uh, rough and tumble sort of melee class. You can see here that their core ability, Wild Cry, increases their stats when there are enemies adjacent to them. And their other ability, Heavy Smash, uh, favors axes very clearly because their defense goes up when an attack it when when an attack is equipped, yes. <laughs> you can read the description and I cannot. Their other abilities are Energy Slash, uh, which adds your SP to your attack when a sword is equipped, and Armor Mastery, which raises their uh, HP and defense aptitudes, as you can see. Cyrus uh, joins your de party de by default, of course, uh, the names are randomly generated, so you might have something different, but my guy was Cyrus, and he served us pretty well in the main story, I guess. He kind of got uh, overshadowed by Fuka, but that's pretty normal. <laughs> Let's take him on a trip. Time to bust some balls. We already busted a ball. He was kind of uh, pathetic, really. <laughs> Well, I say that, but he still managed to one-shot Tyrant Val. It was only because of the victory dharma that I was able to... Well, anyway, you guys saw the video. Anyway. Uh... E-Crush, uh, probably short for Equipment Crush, destroys one random piece of etc. equipment. Uh, probably not something you want to have used on you, but... Uh... It could come in handy, at least in the main story. Not so much when everybody's stats come from their uh, from their levels. <laughs> Shut up, Microsoft! I don't care. I'm shutting down that account. Fight shot increases a target's attack by 100%. Uh, I guess we'll have to see uh, what the effects of. Uh, Improving that is because I sure as heck don't know. Time to bust some balls. Yeah, pretty cool. Lily, don't kill because uh, I didn't give you a weapon. I'm gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Here, that's what we're gonna do. Alright, and just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if I, uh, buff... Whatever it was, fight shot. I 
Uh, I guess it just affects the range. Okay, good to know. Next up on the list, the Valkyrie, the female counterpart to the warrior. Uh, you do not get one of these by default, so if you like lady fighters, you're gonna have to make one yourself. They like swords, spears, and bows. They learn six, uh, spear skills, as well as the ninth tier. Five sk sword skills and four bow skills. Assault attack, their core ability, uh... Apparently gives them a damage bonus the more enemies are defeated. I don't know if this is enemies defeated by anybody or just by the Valkyrie. That's uh, something we're going to have to test in the upcoming demo. Their aptitudes, uh, you can clearly see... Pretty similar to the... Uh, pretty similar to the uh, Warrior. Uh, they have higher hit, lower attack and defense. And uh, lower res for some reason and higher speed. Shield Mastery uh, cuts the damage from normal attacks in half. That could be nice, I guess. Power Shot Get, adds your attack to a bit of your attack to hit when a bow is equipped. Spear Sting adds a bit of your hit to attack when when a spear is equipped. That's pretty cool. So uh, between the four of them, we've kind of uh, got our uh, melee weapons covered, aside from fists, which are covered by something completely different. Of course, uh, if you want to go for fists, uh, look no further than Fenric, I guess. Anyway, moving on. We are going to check out their specials, as well as the exact nature of, uh, of that ability. Also, I should put on some socks pretty soon. Let me handle this. Axel? Crazy town. Yeah, let's check out Axel Charge first. Um, I thought you said she would get to move again, game. Damage plus 30%. What? I think the game lied to me. I think it's actually the number of panels she's moved. See if that's in fact the case. Yeah, okay, it's panels move. The game is just lying to me. <laughs> 100% hit rate. See if uh, this is actually true. Oh! Oh, wait. Uh, is it? Okay, my move stat went up. I did not get an extra turn. Uh, that was my mistake. <laughs> A mistake of interpretation has been made. Anyway, Shock Fixer. It will not miss. Says 100% hit rate, but I'm getting a pretty solid 99 there. So, uh, who knows what the deal is with that. I sure as heck don't. <laughs> Next up. We'll do these guys in a little bit. The healer. Healers are your healing class. No surprise there. <laughs> Their healing spells work off of resistance. They learn all six tiers of them as well as Espoir. Uh, three defensive spells that work on allies, and three uh, offensive debuffs that work on enemies. Or rather, I guess from our perspe pers perspective, blah, 
They are defensive debuffs, reducing attack, int, and hit. These can all be buffed to plus 9, uh, they'll go up to plus or minus 47%, I believe. They also learn three bow skills, which is okay, I guess. <laughs> they uh, I didn't actually take a look at their aptitudes, but you can see they very highly favor res. Uh, attack and hit are pretty good if you want to have an offensive healer. Uh, otherwise, give him a staff, teach him some magic spells. Uh, I don't know. There's staves. Do staves actually raise, uh, raise res? Some of them do. So yeah, if you're gonna give them a healer, uh, they, if you're gonna use them for their proper purpose, give them a whole bunch of orbs, I guess. Let's check out their abilities. Corpse heal increases recovery by 50% times the number of adjacent units. So, uh, yeah, if you want to boost their healing potential, just surround them with guys. Heart's Fertility lets them gain more mana if the killing blow is dealt. So, uh, yeah, I guess that just means direct kills as opposed to getting them through the pyramid. Veteran Nurse adds one to the strength of healing. What? What does that mean? Death's Heal. Stats decrease by 50%, but healing magic gains the reverse effect. So, uh... Yeah, if you're confident in your uh, res, just uh, give them this and uh, watch them go to town on guys, I guess. I want to check out Veteran Nurse. That, uh, that seems like a thing type of object. Uh, that is a thing I say when I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's so super califragilistic expialidocious. Anyway, let's uh, let's try to heal myself. But first, I'll do my best. Let's get on Jenna over here. Yeah, heal amount plus fifty percent, heal amount plus a hundred percent, and so on. Sure is fancy. Look at that! Two million HP heal, and she doesn't even have that much res. Pretty cool. Now then, overload. This is an attack spell. It heals to the point that it hurts. There. Sounds like uh, something Holly White would do in uh, Bravely Default. <laughs> Resist gain uh, increases the target's resistance. Not sure how that's any different from Magic Wall, except that it, uh, it might be more powerful. I guess that makes sense. Well, I guess it's still more powerful than, uh... I guess it's still more powerful than mine... Uh, or than Magic Wall, since uh, Magic Wall only maxes out at 47%. Okay. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. Next up, The Thief. I'm looking at the wrong menu again. Thieves are an absolute necessity in the in the item world. 
because you never know what kind of awesome legendary stuff you're gonna find. Their Thief Skill ability, uh, their primary claim to fame, uh, doubles their success rate when stealing. Every other class is capped at 50%, but not the Thief. Lucky Finger raises the uh, contents of a chest by one item rank when you're when they are the one to kill a chest. Pretty cool. Again, very useful, especially in the land of Carnage item world. As for their uh, skills, they learn four gun skills and also four bow skills. Apparently, you can see that uh, speed is very much in their uh, in their set of aptitudes, though. So uh, definitely uh, prefer a gun over a bow if you're using a thief. That's what I have to say. As for their other two abilities. Heart Steel allows them to steal stats. I don't see the point of this at all. <laughs> and then there is Evade Danger, which uh, completely nullifies damage from bombs. This includes thrown barrels as well as printy explosions. Pretty sweet. Let's take her into the item world and uh, show her off. Not the item world. <laughs> this place, whatever it's called. Ready for me? So yeah, unlike most classes, thieves have a. Uh, well, you can see they have three, uh, three unique skills. Create box and create barrel are about the same. Boxes you can stand on. Barrels can be thrown. Uh, they don't even have an animation. They just happen instantly. Whereas Thief Key will one-shot any chest. This may even be true if the chest is invincible. I, uh, not quite figured that out. But, uh, obviously we can't show it off here. Let's see, uh, let's go to the Forbidden Cell. Where we can show that off. Ready for me? Let's see here. Ah, there it is. Just your everyday treasure chest, but we are here to show off a skill, and that is what we will do. So yeah. Ooh, nice. But, uh, I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, not even an attack, it just one-shots the chest. Alright, that being said, it's time to move on to our magic using classes. These guys are mostly... well, they fill the same role at least. Uh, skulls specialize in power, mages specialize in MP conservation. These guys have a slightly different uh, tier unlocking than the, uh, than the physical classes. Or even a healer. You start being able to make three different types of them, uh, each specializing in fire, wind, and ice. When the sum, when you make three of them and the sum of their levels becomes fifty, then you unlock a, then you unlock the star skull and mage, which specialize in star spells. Each of these can learn six tiers of their respective element. When you have a level one hundred fifty star skull or mage, you unlock the. A prism, which can learn four each of the three elements. Get those to level 450. You unlock the Galaxy Skull and Mage, which learns four tier of all four elements, including Star. But enough talking. Let's go into their stats and see what's up. As you can see, their only weapon fortes are staves. They only learn offensive spells. But uh, as you can see, their uh, their native skills are a little different. Magic Siphon absorbs target's SP. Brain Rise doubles a target's int. Again, the strongest buff of its type. Consume remaining SP to deal double damage to enemy. That's pretty crazy. Ta 
this uh, apparently provides SP regen, which is pretty nice. As for their uh, aptitudes, you can see, very similar. Uh, mages have slightly higher SP. Uh, that's, uh, that's just a flat-out benefit. Huh. So, uh, yeah, mages have a higher total <laughs> aptitude than skulls. Go figure. But, yeah. Magic Bundle. Raises power by 30%, but 50% more SP used. Illusion adds int to speed when staff is equipped. Pretty cool. Whoops. As for uh, the, as for mages, magic moderation cuts SP usage in half. Concentrate adds int to hit when staff is when a staff is equipped. So uh, yeah, uh, their magic is a bit more accurate. As for the alternate abilities. Magic Wand uses Int for uh, physical attacks with a staff. Magic Conversion adds a bit of SP to Int. Current SP, evidently. So, uh, yeah. Do what you will with that, I guess. Enlarge increases magic range by one panel. Uh, not quite as good as uh, Barrel's uh, range buff, but maybe it stacks, I don't know. And Magic Wand is apparently the same. Go figure. <laughs> Alright, let's take them both into battle. It should be mentioned that Mages and Skulls both have a very low move, naturally. Uh, I believe starting at 3? Yeah. Zapini is special because uh, I gave him slippers. Well, that's a neat animation. That, not quite so neat, but oh well. They can't all be winners. <laughs> Pretty much your standard uh, Final Fantasy Osmos type of thing. Now, Elemental Burst. We got a lot of SP, so uh, let's let's see what happens. Okay. Komuda Hikari used Tri Attack. It's uh, super effective, I guess. <laughs> Very uh, reminiscent of Yu's uh, dragon skills in uh, Breath of Fire 2, as well as uh, whatever it was that Ashlyn learned in Dragon Quest 6. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it's not important, though. But yeah, those are the six uh, default humanoid classes. Which means, uh, next up, we are going to uh, go with the uh, mid-tier humanoids. And by mid-tier, I mean... Uh, well, let's see. It looks like we've got eight of them. So, uh, it's going to be a longer episode than this one, I guess. <laughs> see you guys then.